Hello, everybody. How are you today? Are you ready to learn? Great. Please take out your books and open them to Unit 5. Let's start by looking at the picture. What do you see? I see two boys. What do you think the boys are doing? It looks like they're using tablets, so maybe they're reading something or playing a game. Do you have a tablet? If you do, what do you use it for? If you don't, imagine what you would use a tablet for. Talk to your partner about how you would use your tablet. You can do that now. Okay, now, how often do you use things like your cell phone, tablet, or computer? How much time do you think is okay to spend on these devices? Do you think you spend too much time on these devices? Hmm, what about playing games or on computers or cell phones? How much time is too long? These are important questions to ask. And that's what we're going to talk about today. As you can see, our title is I'm Out of Control. So I think one of these boys uses their computer or their tablet a little too much. During our lesson today, think about the two questions on the page. Let's read them together now. Please use your reading finger to follow along. Think about them and then decide if you have a problem. We'll talk about these questions again later at the end of the class. So let's read together. Do you play games with your computer or cell phone? How often and for how long? So keep thinking about these questions and we'll talk about them later. Okay, before we continue, let's talk about our key words. So let's read the key words in the box at the top of the next page. Can you see our six keywords? Good. Let's read them together. Our first word is stay up. Can you repeat after me? Stay up. Stay up. Our next word is concentrate. Concentrate. Next we have delete. Delete. Our next word is self-control. Self-control. And next we have reward. Reward. And finally, we have timer. Timer. Very good. These six words need to be matched to the pictures below. So let's work on this together. In the first picture, what do you see? Yes, there is a girl. And what is she doing? It looks like she's doing homework or some sort of work in a book. Now, where is she looking? Is she looking up? No, she's not looking up. Is she looking off in the distance? No, she's not looking off in the distance. She's looking at her work. Does she look like she's working hard? Yes, I think so. So, is she doing any, is she doing more than one thing? No, she's only working in her book. And she looks like she's working pretty hard. So what word do you think best describes someone who works hard? That's right. It's concentrate. So please neatly write the word concentrate under the first picture. Okay, now let's practice using these words in sentences. Work with a partner to choose the correct word to complete the sentence. After you circle your answer, 
Read the sentence out loud together. Let's do the first one together. The first sentence is, Mom uses a timer, self-control, when she boils eggs. So let's look at some clues in the sentence to find out which word is correct. What is mom doing in the sentence? She's boiling eggs. Now, what helps her boil eggs? Is it self-control or is it a timer? What does a timer do? A timer helps you keep track of how long things take. So would that be helpful for cooking an egg? Yes, I think so. So we can circle the word timer to make this sentence correct. Mom uses a timer when she boils eggs. So circle that answer in your book and then complete the other five sentences with your partner. Don't forget to read the sentence together after you make a choice. Great job, everyone. Okay, now, before we start reading the story, I want to look at the picture at the beginning of Unit 5 one more time. So, look at the picture of the two boys. I want you to choose two key words and write one sentence about each boy. So each sentence should have one of the key words that we just practiced with. Use one key word in each sentence about, and write one sentence about each boy. When you are finished, share your sentences with a partner. Then we'll share a few with the whole class. Okay, I think we're ready to read our story. So please follow along with your reading finger while we read together. The name of our story today is I'm Out of Control. So let's listen and read together now. Dear Agatha, my problem is Craft Clash. I can't stop playing it. Mom only lets me play for half an hour, but if she doesn't check, I play much longer. I sometimes stay up all night playing it. When I try to concentrate on homework, my mind wanders, and I only think about Craft Clash. Then I play on my phone. Mom doesn't know. Should I delete it from my computer and phone? Thanks, Craft Clash Maniac. Dear Craft Clash Maniac, you're having a problem with self-control. But don't worry, you can fix it. The secret is not to stop completely. Instead, try playing a different way. It's like cheese and crackers. It's only bad for you if you have too much. Your mom says you can play for half an hour. Break that into 10-minute blocks. Do your homework for 30 minutes. Then, play for 10 minutes as a reward. But use a timer. After 10 minutes, start over. This helps lots of people, including me. Good luck. Agatha answers. Okay. Now, how is this story told? It's told in a very interesting way because it is told in the form of two emails. Who writes the first email? That's right, it's somebody named Craft Clash Maniac. Is that the person's real name? No, this is called a nickname. It is used so the person doesn't have to share their real name. Now, why does Craft Clash Maniac write his email? Right, he wants help with a problem. 
So who tries to help craft Clash Maniac? It's Agatha Answers. What kind of name is Agatha Answers? Yes, it's a nickname too. So now, with a partner, read the story one more time. While you read, I want you to underline two things. First, find and underline Craft Clash Maniac's problems. There may be more than one. Then, find and underline Agatha Answer's advice to help solve Craft Clash Maniac's problem. Then talk to your partner and decide if Agatha Answer's advice is good. Talk about what advice you would give to Craft Clash Maniac. When you're finished, we will share our advice with everybody. Okay, now that we know the story's problems and solutions, let's complete some comprehension questions. Turn the page so that we can do the first one together. So, if we look at the first question, we have a couple of blank spaces. Let's read these sentences together with our reading fingers, and then we'll try and fill in the blanks. So, the first sentence reads, or the first part of the sentence reads, Craft Clash Maniac can't blank playing a game. And Agatha gives uh, gave some advice to help him blank it. Now, the first blank starts with an S. So Craft Clash Maniac can't s playing a game. And the second blank starts with an F. And Agatha gave some advice to help him f it. So what words do we know that could fit into these two spaces? That's right. Craft Clash Maniac can't stop playing a game. And Agatha gave, gave some advice to help him fix it. What, are, what did Agatha uh, try to fix? She tried to fix his problem. Okay, so now I would like you to complete the remaining questions on your own by circling the correct answer. Swap books with your partner and check your answers against each other's when you are finished. I'm going to do that part again. Okay, now complete the remaining questions on your own by circling the correct answer. When you have finished, swap books with a partner and check their answers when you have finished. If you and your partner have different answers, Look in the book to find the correct answer. Put a star next to the sentence in the story where you found the answers so you can review that information later. Okay. While we read the story, I asked you and your partners to underline Craft Clash Maniac's problem and Agatha Answers advice. Reread the story and review what you underlined. Then complete the chart. Let's do the first one together. So we see this chart here on, pay, on the, the last page of our uh, book here, or of our unit. So we're going to talk about Craft Clash Maniac's problem. We're gonna do this one together. So let's read the bullet points first. Again, use your reading finger to follow along. So, what is Craft Clash Maniac's problem? He can't stop playing a game. He stays up all night and cannot blank on homework. So what word is missing? You should have found the answer when you uh, were underlining the story in the story. So, what word fits here? He stays up all night and cannot concentrate on his homework. Very good. So write in the correct answer there. Write concentrate neatly on the line. 
I want you to complete the chart with your partner and, of course, check your answers with each other. Okay, today we're going to do a bigger activity instead of playing a game. We will we'll start by filling out our link to write activity in our books. So the link to write activity at the bottom of the page. Think about a problem that you have. It can be big or it can be small. Then think of something you could try to do to solve your problem. Finally, choose a nickname. Do not write your real name. When you are finished, check your work and make sure that you spelled everything correctly and include proper punctuation. So here we have, just like Craft Clash Maniac, an email that we're writing. So again, in the first line, what should you write? That's right, you write a problem that you have. It can be real or it can be made up, your choice. In the next line, you're going to do something a little different. Craft Clash Maniac didn't have any ideas to solve his problem, but I want you to come up with your own example of a way that you could solve your problem. So for example, if you can't stop eating chocolate, what is a solution that you, could, you can suggest to Agatha Answers? You could say, uh, I can't stop eating chocolate. Should I eat more vanilla candy? Is that, good? Is that a good solution? No, it's not a good solution, but you can make any solution you want. And then finally, you're going to sign your name, but not your real name. You're going to use a nickname. Okay, make sure you check everything is written well and properly and neatly because you're going to rewrite your email on a blank piece of paper. So make sure you write the whole thing, starting with Dear Agatha. Just like this. Dear Agatha, I am having a problem with self-control. I can't stop, blah, blah, blah. So write out your answers neatly on this blank piece of paper. The reason you're going to do this is because I am going to collect these. And then I will hand out your emails randomly to people in the class. That's why you need to have a nickname. For homework, please take this email that I give you and on the other side of the paper, I want you to write a response like Agatha answers. So you're going to write another email making a, selection, a suggestion for how your classmate can solve their problem. If you don't know how to write a response, look at Agatha Answer's email in the story for help. So you will write an email like this. So an example, Dear friend of Chip, you are having a problem with self-control, but don't worry, you can fix it. So you can start your email like this, or you can write it any way you want, but you want to give a solution to your classmate's problem. When you come back to class, we will share the emails that we have written together. So it's very important that you finish your homework this time. Okay, great job everyone. We are finished with today's class. I hope you had fun. Don't forget, we have two pieces of homework to do. First, we have to do our workbook pages, so make sure you finish page 12 and 13 in your workbook. But also, what was our other bonus piece of homework? That's right, to answer your classmate's email. So don't forget to write your Agatha Answers response email uh, and bring it to class next time. All right. I hope you had fun today. Good luck with your emails and I will see you next time. Bye bye.